Lenny, thank you. Now, less than a month away from November 8th, the general election, our congressional midterm. 29 days from today, voters will head to the polls to cast their decisive ballots. We begin our Commitment 2022 coverage tonight with a preview of some of the races and a look at some of the big issues in this congressional midterm. Over the next month, you will hear directly from the candidates themselves who sat down with WXII 12 News for extended interviews. Bill O'Neill joins us now with a look at what we can expect to see with this cycle's political coverage. Bill. North Carolina voters have a U.S. Senate race, two state Supreme Court races, and here in the Piedmont Triad, we have several congressional races, as well as every seat in the legislature up for grabs. Voters will hear from North Carolina Senate candidates Sherry Beasley and Ted Budd in a race that could well determine control of the U.S. Senate next year. What they want is abortion at any time for any reason, and they want it at taxpayer expense, and that's wildly out of step. Who makes the decision? Is it a woman and her physician, uh, or is it the government? Judicial races normally don't attract much attention or money, but North Carolina Supreme Court races are the exception this year. So far, the candidates have raised more than $3 million. Is it good for North Carolina for that much money to be spent on a judicial race? Yeah, I do worry about it. Two seats are on the ballot. Republican Richard Dietz versus Democrat Lucy Inman in one race. Democrat Sam Irvin versus Republican Trey Allen in the other. At stake, which party controls the high court and possibly decides the fate of major issues such as abortion and voting rights? Right now, Democrats hold a four to three majority. Does it matter which party is in control of the Supreme Court? It shouldn't. I don't get up every morning and say, what is the agenda for my political party today? We have several congressional races in the Piedmont Triad. Republican Virginia Fox is running for a 10th term in Washington. She faces political newcomer Kyle Parrish in the 5th Congressional District, covering the northwest part of the state. We've gotten things done for the American people. And I don't see that on the other side of the aisle. Meantime, Democrat Kathy Manning hopes to win a second term representing the triad. She faces Republican Christian Castelli, who's making his first run for political office. I think uh, she represents the ultra wealthy. She's listed as the 19th most wealthy member in the House of Representatives. One of the most contentious campaigns for the North Carolina legislature is taking place in Alamance County. Tough times require real leaders, not radicals like Ricky Hurtado. A rematch from 2020 featuring Republican challenger Steve Ross versus incumbent Democrat Ricky Hurtado. I'm so disappointed that my opponent continues to um, spout misinformation across the county. The big question looming over North Carolina's legislative races, will Republicans win a supermajority, allowing them to bypass Governor Cooper's veto power? My biggest concern is we relive the embarrassments to this state that we had when they had supermajorities before, whether it be HB2. And finally, our 2022 commitment coverage asked candidates the tough question. What is your favorite food? Boy, that's a tough one. Um, I, honestly, I was thinking about that. I don't know if I have a favorite. I really don't. Want to guess the most popular food among candidates? Stay tuned and find out. Bill O'Neill, WXII, 12 News.